everyone. Chill. Long before he was in high office, he was just, well, getting high. But what was once good for the movie star turned governor is not good for the people. Not yet. There's something happening here. Because there's regulations on it, I think, why why not? You, if you can regulate it like alcohol, it's not any more dangerous. But what do your parents think? Is there a bit of a... Oh, my parents are, would be completely against it. <laughs> <laughs> Enter the Germinator. <laughs> and a new wave of Californians dreaming of a time when all the leaves aren't brown, they're green and legal. Mango, purple kush, purple princess, blue cheese, flow, Maui, super silver haze, train wreck, purple urkel, OG kush. If somebody told me that there were six plants growing across the street right now, I probably wouldn't get up out of my chair and walk over there. Hello and welcome to Foreign Correspondents. I'm Mark Corcoran. On assignment, high in the Andes Mountains in the Bolivian city of La Paz. But our story tonight comes from far to the north of here in the United States. The state of California currently finds itself in a financial hole so deep that a crack Hollywood special effects team would have trouble illustrating it. And so far, no one not even the state's action hero governor, has figured out a way to fill it in. But that's not for want of trying. These tough economic times have prompted some unusual solutions, but perhaps none so provocative as the one we examine tonight. Here's Eric Campbell. from San Francisco on Highway 101 and you soon reach the famous vineyards of Mendocino County. I'm going, I'm going where the water like wine. These grapes were once the lifeblood of the community. Mendocino, like its neighbour the Napa Valley, is still a magnet for connoisseurs. But we're not here for the wine. We're here for a much more lucrative crop that's the real source of the county's wealth. We're here for the marijuana. You won't see it from the highway. It's grown discreetly on the back roads. So this is our uh, light deprivation greenhouse. Uh -huh. What you do, um, the larger plants that are in here are going to be forced into flowering. On, Matt Cohen is one of the county's most successful horticulturists, producing premium organic marijuana. These are pedigree clones of the best cannabis strains uh, in California. We can't show where his farm is. His scared criminals may come and steal his crop. But the police know all about it. This is a very well-known cannabis growing area. And uh, we now have very detailed uh, regulations on how one can legitimately operate a medical cannabis cooperative. Cohen operates through a large voter-driven loophole in California's drug laws. In 1996, a referendum allowed marijuana, also known as cannabis, to be grown and sold for medical reasons. You have to go through some 25 different hoops you got to jump through in order to do that. Criminal background checks and, you know, you have to be operating a not-for-profit uh, entity. A complete tr uh, accountability for every gram of medicine that is produced. His cooperative supplies hundreds of members who have doctor's recommendations to take it. Angel Rach is a self-described soccer mum in San Francisco. She smokes a potent mix of cannabis head and extract, often every two hours. I'd be dead without it. 
I have severe chronic pain. I have arthritis. <coughs> I also have a life-threatening wasting syndrome. I don't get hungry at all. I, I basically, without cannabis, I will drop a pound a day. I de literally deteriorate. My body cannot function. I can't move. Um, I can't eat. I can't sleep. It really is a full physical medical breakdown. I don't get high from cannabis at all. It's really boring. I really honestly don't like using it. I do it because I have to. Back in the 60s, marijuana was seen as something only freaks and hippies took. San Francisco's Summer of Love, based in the scenic Haight-Ashbury district, terrified America's leaders and media. The movement appears to be growing. Use of drugs appears to be spreading. There is the real danger that more and more young people may follow the call to turn on, tune in, drop out. Well, there are the hippies. They make you uncomfortable. And we want to get loaded. And we want to have a good time. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a party. A couple of generations on, public attitudes have changed radically. Away, baby, let's go. Kate Ashbury, along with the rest of the city, now has legal shopfront dispensaries for medical marijuana. We're going to have a good time. Thirteen other states have followed California's lead. Even Washington, D.C. allows marijuana for patients. We want to be free to do what we want to do. And in a few months, Californians will ponder the biggest change of all. They will vote on whether to end nearly a century of prohibition. Now, as prevalent as marijuana is, it's still illegal in every state to use it for recreation. But the November referendum could change that. It would mean anyone over 21 could have an ounce of cannabis and grow it themselves. What's more, it would open the way for it to become a legal cash crop, giving local governments the power to regulate its sale and tax. Not surprisingly, many of today's younger generations see it as a no-brainer. Marijuana is the cash crop of California. I thought it was corn. No. It I is, thought it was oranges. It is marijuana. And if you were to legalize it, it would be like three, no. It's something ridiculous. Like Two billion dollars in revenue. As long as there's regulations on it, I think, why why not? Why, you, if you can regulate it like alcohol, it's not any more dangerous. But what do your parents think? Is there a bit of a Oh, my parents are, would be completely against it. <laughs> <laughs> But many parents do agree. Latest polling suggests a slim majority of Californians plan to vote yes. Not because they want to smoke it, but because they want to tax it. Uh, we uh, have an uh, entity here called the Board of Equalization, and they're kind of our tax body. So they've estimated that maybe two to three billion for the uh, for the state budget. Now that's not going to resolve a twenty billion dollar deficit, is which is what we have, but it could go a long way, you know, uh, towards uh, uh, many things that people are are seeing uh, being uh, pared down. All members vote who desire to vote. And I thought that was what America was supposed to be about: family values. Democrat legislator Tom Amiano is a longtime advocate of marijuana reform. His ideas have moved from the fringe to the mainstream since the U.S. recession sent California close to bankruptcy. He says even Republicans are privately admitting they can't afford to keep it illegal. I think the violence that surrounds marijuana now and, and the, how 16 billion bucks a year is the industry the biggest cash crop in California. I think people, you know, are becoming more and more aware of the hypocrisy of pretending that doesn't exist. 
And I think the the mantra is uh, uh, prohibition is, uh, is 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 chaos and, and uh, regulation uh, is, is control. California is already slashing public spending. Schools, hospitals, even police departments are being cut to the bone. Taxing marijuana could be just what the doctor ordered. You know, our economy right now in California is so bad. You know, our kids can't get school books. They can't get the things that they need. They're talking about firing and laying off more teachers and left and right. And now they're talking about getting rid of the welfare system. Anything that we can do in this country at this point to create jobs is a good thing. But much can change between now and November. The departing governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is opposing the bill despite his youthful dabbling with the drug. Many insist marijuana is a problem, not a solution. It's a major cause of substance dependence in the United States. It's a leading cause of going into treatment in the United States. It, it's a leading cause of highway fatalities. Uh, rivals alcohol uh, in the United States. Uh, it's, it's a very serious uh, health problem, and, and especially, I would say, for youth. Just say no. Just say no. Dr. Robert DuPont was the White House drug czar in the 1970s. His work led to a toughening of drug laws in the 1980s. The most dangerous drug in the United States, and we haven't begun to find out all of the ill effects. DuPont believes the move to medical marijuana in the 90s opened a back door to abuse. They're not treating HIV, they're not treating cancer, they're not little old ladies, they're mostly young men. And what are they treating? Insomnia, backache, depression, anxiety. That's not a sick population, that's a drug abusing population. Sunday morning. America has been thrashing out the same arguments about prohibition versus regulation for more than 40 years. Well, you can't beat it. <laughs> you know, the, all these years of prohibition haven't accomplished anything, really, except massive amount of crime and a huge illegal trade so it's it, there's no easy answer there's no you know quick fix so all the we got still some more orders coming in how many orders do you think we got matt cohen believes the best system would be licensed cafes serving gourmet cannabis to responsible adults Forget your backyard dope plant. To ensure consistency and quality for patients, he grows products as varied and carefully tended as wine. This is pretty funny. We only work with pedigree tested clones. And it's the same way with all the, the, the vineyards across the street, you know, it's the same Pinot Noir clone. In here we have some edible storage. Uh, this is all medicated edibles, different varieties. All right, so not everybody smokes the marijuana. They no, take not it at all. Different ways. Yeah, there's tinctures, sprays, capsules, lozenges, a wide variety of gourmet baked goods, truffles. And the orange down there, what's that? Those are carrots. Oh, the carrots. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem he sees is the druggy sounding names by which they're currently known. So the names of these strains are we have like. L.A. Confidential, Bubba Kush, Casey Jones, Blue Dream, Chem Dog. I think they'll be thinking more in the terms of non-counterculture related names uh, because it'll be a legitimate industry. Uh, and and I'll probably start coming up with more appropriate names. Ooh, Starbucks type names, sort of more gourmet. <laughs> Call this the Frappuccino or something? I don't know. I've... Now, we have some teas over there. They're pretty good. The medical dispensaries in San Francisco are already going down this path. Are you a patient? Yes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're patient, check in with the young lady there, oh, and we can get you the bathroom. That's my first time. That's okay. Welcome to this guy, my friend. Uh, Many look more like trendy bars than pharmacies. I have a pain bomb there that, you know, it's kind of like a roll-up, twist-up form of this pill there. You know, it's effective, too. Once you show your doctor's recommendation, there's a bewildering array of legal cannabis. Organic Hindu, the perps, and then you have the Purple Delight, too. The best out of the three, you know, I'm thinking I'd probably go with the Purple Delight, but... This one here? Correct. Okay, I will take your word for it, and I would like... So, uh, let's do three and a half grams of that. And do you have... What else do you have for appetite? The reason people want to do this is the idea of taming marijuana to, to make it look okay. Well, that smells good. That has a bad effect on the public health because it, it, it increases the willingness to use the drug and the legitimacy of using the drug. And in fact, that's the reason the pro-marijuana people are leading with medical marijuana, because they exactly want to change that image uh, of, of the drug. The law allows people to buy marijuana for any condition a doctor believes it could help. Angel Rachel's doctor, Frank Lucido, sees it as something of a wonder drug. You know I smoke a lot of grass. Oh, Lord. It seems to be at the root of, you know, a lot of our physiology. We hear about endorphins and, you know, the endogenous morphines, but we have the endorphin system. I mean, but we have the endocannabinoid system. So, uh, they're only, the scientists are only scratching the surface of what the endocannabinoid system can do. Even so, many of the people buying marijuana for supposed health reasons look remarkably healthy. But Dale Clare insists you shouldn't judge by appearances. She's an activist for the referendum and works for a medical dispensary group. She's also a marijuana patient. I suffer vomiting attacks, and when I start to throw up, I can't stop. And when I say that, I mean full-blown uh, dry heaves for 12, 14, 16 hours. You know, if I walked in or out of any dispensary, I look about as healthy as they can get. I am about as healthy as they can get. But every once in a while, I'll go into a cycle that's almost killed me several times in my life. And this is the only thing that I've found that can prevent me from having to go to the hospital. We've been a few years since we've approved medicines on the basis of anecdotes. <laughs> that is a fool's game. I understand there are a lot of people who find all kinds of things helpful to them, and they can present very uh, compelling uh, testimonies, uh, but this is not science. The controversy over dispensaries is nothing compared to the controversy over growers. When the 1996 referendum was passed, politicians ran a mile, refusing to set statewide regulations on how medical marijuana should be grown. It's been left to local governments to work out what is and isn't legal. 14 years on, communities are still arguing about it. And we sent that letter to every member of Congress and even to the White House. I think we got one response back from one of them. It's still an issue they want to ignore. You aren't doing it in Mendocino County. How is the state going to regulate this? The old hippies of Mendocino County are absolutely not the problem. <laughs> On a Friday night in Mendocino County, dozens of cannabis growers have come to a town hall meeting with the county supervisors. Many are trying to grow marijuana legally for medical use, but they're not happy with the rules the county has set. One of the 23 hoops that you have to jump through requires five acres of land, and I live on 4.2 acres. That means that my collective of 10 is reduced to two and a half plants per person. I'm very sorry if your 4.22 acres pebbles isn't isn't the correct size to fall within the law, then... then the man caught in the middle is the elected sheriff, Tom Allman, a one-time warrior in the war on drugs. 
Unfortunately, from the start in 1996 of Prop 215, there's always been a huge gray area in the law. The simple principle of medical marijuana has become a legal minefield for enforcement. I started in law enforcement where if you had an ounce of marijuana, you went to jail. So now if you have an ounce of marijuana, in Mendocino County, if you have an ounce of mar marijuana, my deputies wouldn't give you a second look. I mean, I, if somebody told me that there were six plants growing, growing across the street right now, I probably wouldn't get up out of my chair and walk over there because even if we went over there and even if the person said, yes, I'm growing this illegally and I'm going to sell all of it, it wouldn't go anywhere in court. The courts would say, we're not going to prosecute six plants. Did we find the gun? Not yet. Sheriff Allman's problem is that most people aren't trying to follow the law. They're trying to bend or break it. So we have the car and we have two of the bad guys. One of them still up. From home invaders to international drug syndicates. Their job is to try to eradicate the big players while regulating the small ones. A short drive with Deputy C.J. Denton shows how prevalent marijuana is. Yeah, right there, see? That's a new plantation? Yeah. I see nine or ten plants there, and that looks about half of the garden. Young growers have flocked here from all over America many on the assumption that anything goes. And everyone claims they're only growing it for medicine. We contact young people and, you know, they'll be 18 or 19 and they'll have a medical card. They say they got a bad back. I always say, yeah, me too. <laughs> Some people, they don't even research the law. They just says, oh, well, I thought it was legal. So everything's in these pots. But unless you're a legal expert, it can be hard to know what's allowed. Every county has different laws, and they're constantly changing. So these are the police photos from the raid. Eugene Denson, an ex-hippie turned attorney, travels from county to county defending would-be medical growers charged with commercial cultivation. Now, how can we tell that these are seedlings rather than clones? The 1996 referendum has kept lawyers like him busy. Another trimmer. The bill is very short and very simple. Like all of the major good things of mankind, the Golden Rule, the Bill of Rights, the Ten Commandments, short and sweet. Uh, which, but it means that it leaves a lot open to be filled in, interpretation and those sort of things. We were actually only running at about 800 plants, I believe. So very frequently, I find clients who are completely compliant with the law, who are nevertheless charged with felonies. So what thoughts do you have as the referendum approaches for legalizing marijuana overall? I'll never be out of work. That's, that's my thoughts. I'd love to have some state legislators, some state senators, who really and truly have the intestinal fortitude to say, this is what's right and this is what's wrong. Because the laws we have right now say neither. They say, well, this is what we, how we feel and this is what should happen. Well, I don't go to a philosophy job. I enforce the law and I don't want to enforce philosophy. <laughs> If the experience of medical marijuana is anything to go by, regulating commercial growing would be a brave leap into the unknown. But this is a pioneering state in a country founded as a great experiment. In November, California will decide whether to take it even further, creating an unalienable right to life, liberty and the pursuit of cannabis. You know, Allen Ginsberg said to me in the late 1960s, marijuana will be legal in five years. Well, <laughs> you know, he's died, marijuana's not legal. I don't think I get into the prediction business. I would say that it is now closer than it's ever been in my lifetime, but I don't know what's going to happen. That's it.
Thank you.